together. We're not to fellowship. We're not to, we don't pray over one another's needs. We don't prophesy over one another. We are there for one purpose. That is to go between God and man for the sake of whatever his prayer assignment is that night. And we get his prayer assignment by worshiping him, waiting upon him, and then he begins to give us an understanding of what he wants us to pray for. Sometimes we'll pray only over one issue a whole week. And we'll have a different group in each night. But the Lord will give the same thing to the next night group. And, the same. and it's an awesome thing to watch how the Holy Spirit moves. Now, how do we know which issues to pray over? When two or three of our people have gotten the same, have gotten the same word. I trust the intercessors. I believe that the word and the strategy for, for, for churches and for cities and for nations are, and, and, uh, um, and, and individual situations are actually hidden as, as, as uh, um, things to be brought out in the intercessory prayer people. Amen? Because for the most part, intercessory prayer people are prophetic. In fact, that's what gets you in trouble. Because you want to share those glorious things that you understand perfectly and other people don't have a clue what you're talking about. And we begin to try and share out. So I'll give you a, three, three pitfalls before we finish this session of what to get rid of. Now, I have, I have extensive uh, teaching tapes. I have one that's got 14, uh, actually 28 sessions uh, on 14 tapes called the Intercessory Training uh, Series over in the, in the uh, bookstore. So we have written and taught. Uh, this will be everything from basics to uh, through shofars and banners. And we talk about all of these things. Uh, I, think there, I think I do have one on the Tabernacle of David and, and the value of worship and so on and then we also have how to set up your intercession some of the pitfalls and and some practical advice too so if you are, are, are haven't got your intercession set up and you're wanting to I'm not saying mine is the only way this is just our style and um, you know avail yourself if you so desire but in the in the area of of coming in at night we come in without, this is the way, and we're, the, the way we're going to do it here today too. We come in without any forethought, without any distractions, and we come in to minister to the Lord because that is the first and foremost calling to all people, all intercessors, is to minister to the Lord. That's what, that's what Aaron and his sons were set in position for, was to minister to the Lord. When you minister to the Lord and we set aside our own agenda, and we began to just worship him for who he is, asking him, God, what's on your heart? What do you want us to pray about? That he's taken us around the world through that. We blindly, stupidly stumbled over that. I mean, I've been around for, you know, almost 40 years in the Lord, and how stupid I, had, I was. I mean, I consider myself then not to, have, not to have understood that the quickest way to enter in and to find out, you know, what, what needs to be prayed about is ask God. Ask him. There's a million things we could pray about. And we can spend a lot of time in praying all, all these different issues. But what's on his heart? What does he want done? That's what intercession is all about. Going between God and men for the sake of men. God has a purpose and a plan for man. He has, he has a plan for your church. He has a plan for your family. He has a plan for your city and for your, for your state and for our nation. But what's on his heart? What's on his mind? And so as we are worshiping him, and two or three or four people will get the same thing. Maybe it'll not be exactly the same, the same uh, context because God uh, deals with us in our own particular way. But we have two filters each night. We have one of our people that lead. We have about 14, uh, isn't it about 14 leaders we have now? And I'm hoping to bring more on because I'm seeing tremendous uh, 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 leadership ability in, in, other, in other members. But we, we have that many. They, they, uh, they take turns leading at night with two filters. The filters are so that people can come there, even in our own group, and tell them what God's showing. And so when the time comes and there's enough, there's enough evidence that this is God's heart, then what we do is we make declaration out of revelation. Hello. You can safely declare the will, you can, you can safely declare in prayer what God's will is if he sent it down what he desires. Amen? So what we do then, we ask the person or the people that have gotten these to begin to declare that. They need to pray it out. You see, in birthing now, uh, it's not in the same sense, you know, of birthing as, as what, uh, in the natural child, we birth out of our mouth. 
The mouth creates. And so when we, when we are in intercession, and sometimes it will be, it will be painful, and, and you will feel, you know, something very deep inside of you, and, and even, even, you know, like, a, like you want to birth, but it's, it's going to be birthed and must be birthed out of the mouth in prayer. Amen? If, if you don't understand what it's all about, do it in tongues. But until a release comes in your spirit, and then you know that something has been established. Now, not every, every time we pray, to, pray does it happen that way. Sometimes we just pray, you know, uh, just uh, in a declaration type form. There's all different ways. And you'll, as you flow together with your group, you'll see what works for you. But we, we absolutely believe that, that the intercession department and people should be the cleanest people and place in the church because we are carrying the burden of, of what's going to happen uh, in, in that church as it's covered in prayer. Does that mean you supersede the pastor? Of course not. The pastor has the vision. Well, you say, well, what if my pastor doesn't have the same vision God's given me? In your patience, possess ye your souls. In our patience, it tells us in Luke, we possess our souls. So it's going to be a soul work on you, a soul overhaul. Do you know how long ago it was that the Lord spoke to us that intercession and worship were to be married together? How long we have been waiting for this? Probably, I would say, mm, 96 maybe. Somewhere in 96, the Lord said his will was for the intercession and the worship to be married together, that it needed to be released together. So did I run to Lyndall and say, guess what? No. When Lyndall approached me this year, he said, you know what? He said, I think we're going to do worship. You know what I think it ought to be? I think it ought to be intercession and worship. What do you think? Oh, sounds like a good idea to me. If I could tell you the innumerable nights we have interceded for that to be released and to be birthed, I couldn't begin to tell you. Is that manipulation? No. I believe it's what's on the heart of God. But we have to be patient. And when God shows you something that's going to happen in your church, we don't run to the pastor and say, you know, pastor, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to be doing that. No, no, no. And it isn't manipulation in prayer because there can be a witchcraft type of prayer where we begin to impose and pray these things on, you know, oh, our will on somebody else. No, we need to pray that the will of God will be moving in and, in and through whoever, you know, is, is in charge. Your pastor, we need to bless him. Bless him. Just keep speaking blessings on him. When he sees the obedient, loving heart that you have and your compassion and your, your submission to him, that's going to speak more to him than running to him with your big prophetic word telling him, even though that prophetic word may be true, uh, telling him that. What you do is take that prophetic word and pray it at home. God, I just speak this and just begin to declare it and just begin to, 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 to seed into it and water what God has given you and, and, and then stand back and, and watch and, and keep, keep pouring worship on it and, and keep thanking the Lord for what he's going to do. And uh, we, have, we have been on such a journey here. When we first started, we did not know we were to pray for the nations. We didn't know that we were to pray outside of our church. We were just an intercessory prayer group to keep the revival going and to see souls come. And the Lord, little by little, as we waited upon him and as we, as we became more and more open, remember, I'm, I'm coming from a, a mainstream Assemblies of God background. My husband and I were associate pastors in an AG church. I don't say that as a negative. I just say that as a more structured style than what we, than obviously what we did last night. <laughs> I have d definitely had an overhaul, yes. But I mean, I, I'm aware that even, even with that, there's still stuff hanging on me, you know, that, that I've picked up through the years thinking it was God and it's actually just the commandments of men or it's, it's things we've absorbed. You know, when you, when you get saved, you put on your denominational glasses and for, for the, the most part, you look at everything through those glasses from then on. And God's just telling us, you know, take them off and just look at me and, and see them through my eyes. So when we, when, I'll never forget the night that he, that he really began to deal with us about, uh, and the prophetic intercession, you know, the physical type thing was happening. And I, um, I'd had a little bit of exposure to that through the years, but I mean, it was, it was like full blown here.
And when I came to Brownsville, everything was already going on, you know. I was three months into the revival, and I knew it was God because I've been in Pentecost for so long. The shirking and the uh, shirking, the shaking and the jerking and things like that didn't bother me. I'd seen that, live, you know, ha had been around that for so many years, especially when the fires were burning. When we had revival, there were, there were different kinds of manifestations and things. Whenever, um, uh, whenever it'd be dead, you know, nothing would be happening. But um, when one night we were in uh, intercession and the Lord spoke prophetically after we had waited on him. And he said, I want you to dig out the river and I want you to build up the, the banks with praise and worship. And he said, if you'll do that, then I will cause the river to begin to flow out into tributaries. It'll get deeper and wider here, but it'll begin to flow out into tributaries all over America. Well, that's a good question. How do you dig out a river? Oh, boy. So uh, I just pretended I had a shovel. I mean, it was a physical, it was a physical um, act. It was, it was a faith act for me to do. I didn't have a shovel in my hand, but in my imagination, I had a shovel, and I was going to dig out that river as deep as I could. And so some of the other intercessors, you know, it didn't take a whole lot to encourage them to do something like that. Uh, you know, we began to all, uh, all do that corporately together, and the Holy Spirit began to just give us faith and, and kind of over, override our reason. And I began to, you know, we began to, to build up the, the banks with worship, and we were worshiping and praising the Lord. And then we began begin to see that there and hear of, of other places being touched by the glory of God and that the river was coming to their churches. And so then we began to have more people coming from around the United States. And one night when we were in intercession, this is, this is early, probably late 95s and early 96, because we were uh, spending, we had more nights of revival in those days and we had more uh, hours of intercession and uh, we needed to, we needed all we could get because we were this is on-the-job training, and it still is now. We don't pretend to know everything. We're learning something new every single day. I don't think you can ever arrive because God, you know, he's the one that's orchestrating it all. But one night, uh, in, he, he gave a prophetic word, a scripture, in Psalm, the second Psalm, I believe it is. And he said, um, he said um, ask of me the nations, and I'll give them to you, and it's an inheritance. Ask of me the nations, and I'll give them to you as an inheritance. And so we begin to ask the Lord, okay, God, give us the nations, give us the nations, give us the nations. Then, then the, word, the word came in our group, and the Lord says, I've given you the nations, now take them. Okay. <laughs> How do we do that? And so um, I just got, uh, eventually, you know, I'm the leader, and everybody's looking at me. What are we going to do next? Oh. And uh, I said, we got a map. So we got out a map of the nations, we put it on the floor, in the middle of the floor, and I just jumped in the middle of the map, and I began to dance like we were last night. All over the nations began to call out uh, the nations that God had promised to give, enough, get, to give us, because he said, wherever your foot steps, I'll give that to you. And that's what we were doing last night. We were using our imagination, God given imagination, shall we say, to walk across the nations. Now, I, I got a beautiful prophetic word from a lady. I, I think I misplaced it now, but I did read it, and it was so, so powerful about the the way that things have been moving along if I can if I can find it later I'll I'll be happy to share it because it was really really tremendously encouraging from that night we begin to see people see at, at the beginning the people were only coming from local and uh, as pastor says and as I have heard uh, a lot of the people started coming just to be sure that what the, the rumor that they'd heard about John Kilpatrick was true because he was such a, an organized, such a controlling, you know, a, a pastor in, in control. And they had heard that he was just laying on the floor all night while the services went on. And they couldn't believe that that was true. And so they came to find out and see if it really was. And so as, the, because he had a, a television broadcast and so on, and he's just so prim and proper. And uh, to see him draped over the, over the soundboard like that, out of commission, night after night and week after week, was just more than they could imagine. So when the, that was what attracted it, the people at first and then the word began to get out and then they started coming from the neighboring states and so on but um, uh, after the, the time of the release in intercession we began to see people trickling in from all over the world and so what happened is the nations began to come to us 
And what they would do is go back to their countries and they would begin to take, they, they'd carry the river or the fire with them and God would, God would move. And then he's begun to send many of us to the nations. So it was a, a beyond our comprehension at that point. But God birthed it and began to release it in intercession. This is what, this is what will happen. And so we need not to think highly of ourselves, you know, like we're something special. All we are is a part of the wheel. We're just one of the cogs. I, I get around intercessors that are so full of themselves, and I'll give you the three, I'll give you the three basics. The, the, the big, the big, um, what it would be, I say, no-nos? How, how can we say that? The th these three things, any one of these three things will destroy your intercessory prayer group. I might also add with the banners and stuff like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull those out on Sunday morning service. Yeah, let, let, uh, you know, let the Lord ease your pastor. Unless your church is already into that, then that's fine. But let, let just be eased into it. If God moves upon you in, in groanings or mutter, uh, all that, our people here, if they begin to, to manifest in any way, we take them out. These are our own people. We take them in the back room. I mean, if you're going to have a baby, do you want to have it up on the stage or, you know, I mean, would you like to have it in a taxi cab? There's a proper protocol and a place for everything to be, to be, uh, to take place. And I know I get, I get emails all the time from pastors saying, well, you know, I don't want to quench this, but my intercessors are disrupting. You know, they're, they're doing, they're moaning and they're doing things right in the sanctuary. And I write them back and I tell, find a room for them. Find a room for, t have them taken out if you have to have the ushers drag them out. You know, be humiliated that one time, intercessors, and you'll learn. You know, that we need to always be, uh, it, it took us so long here to gain credibility in intercession. It did. Intercession has such a bad name. And it's our own fault much of the time because we were just so into God and God wants us to do this now and, and I don't want to be disobedient to him. Well, I think, I think if it says that the spirit is subject to the prophet, the spirit is also subject to the intercessor, okay? And there is a level of control that you can take over your situation. And uh, so our, uh, what happens, the ones that are a little bit less out of commission, then, then, uh, and if, if it begins to occur in the, in the sanctuary, then we have other intercessors that will discreetly take them out. We, we kind of watch out for one another. Uh, our instructions to our intercessors are, if you feel like, you know, you need someone to come pray with you, then just get another intercessor and go to the back room. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because our goal here, our focus here is souls. And even something as good as, as intercessory prayer and as powerful as it is can be a distraction to a sinner. And he'll start looking at what in the world that person's having a, some kind of a tremor at, attack. They're having some kind of a fit over there, you know, and they will not hear what's going on from the pulpit. The enemy will use anything he can. So we just try to close all the doors in that. So I'm just saying intercessors, go, for, go with God all the way. But please be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your pastoral covering, what you are permitted to do and not to do. And I, I want to, and I don't argue with your leadership. I want to tell you, I, I have never seen anything like the, the, the independent spirit that's in people. If my pastor comes and talks to me, uh, you know, and he says he wants something or he says he doesn't want something, it's, I, I don't care if I feel like I'm absolutely supposed to do this. What I do is I line up under him. I say, yes, sir, whatever you want, that's what we'll do. Whatever you don't want, that's what we won't do. And so in this way, we have, we have also gained his confidence. You know, if he can't trust you, I mean, how much power or how much influence would you have with him? Do I get to talk to Pastor Kilpatrick all the time about what goes on? No. 90% of whatever goes on in the intercessory prayer room, and we pray it through, unless I think it's something that absolutely needs his attention. I, so uh, I, don't, I don't run to him with everything. In fact, I run to him with hardly anything. Sometimes he'll come along and say, hey, what's, what's, go, what, what's being said in the intercessory prayer room? Then I will share with him briefly some, some highlights. If there's some things that need his immediate attention, then when I, when I ask for that, this is a very, very busy man. He knows if I ask to see him that it's going to be important, and he will immediately let me come in. Now, if I ran to him with every single little 
you know, jot and tittle of everything, he would say, oh no, there she is again. And so I wait and I, and I try and work out everything myself and, you know, with the help of the Lord and, and with other um, intercessors, we try to pray things through so that we do not have to trouble the pastors. The pastors have enough on their mind. Our job is to pray. Our job is to, is to get the mind of the Lord and let the pastors be, be free to pastor. Amen? Are there any pastors in here? Do you say amen? Yeah. Now, I mean, if you want to know what's going on and you ask specifically, that's a different thing. But let's let the pastors do what they're called to do and we will do what we are called to do. All right. In Psalm 24, who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? He who has... And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He or she is the one that shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face. Selah. And then it goes on. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. I believe that intercession opens doors. Amen. The heads and the gates of the, of the people uh, are, are to be lifted up and, and open the door for the glory of God to be able to come. We are portals, beloved. We are portals of God's presence. We are portals of his spirit. When we, when we allow his spirit to flow through us, with, when it's not a clogged up well, as I call it, you know, God pours in liberally, but we got so much trash in here that we just drip out, so we're basically drips, amen? Instead of the bellies flowing with living water, we're just dripping out a little bit. God wants us to be so, so into his presence and so close to him that his river can flow through us, his blessing can flow through us as gates that open up. And I will say this for the pastors, I believe that you are the gatekeepers of your city. You can either, either open up for the glory of God to hit your city or you can close it down. It will depend upon, you are more important in your city than the mayor is, than the political leaders are, because you are the man or woman of God that has been set in that city to change that city. We will give an answer to God for our cities. I believe that. We will have to stand before the Lord. What did you do for your city? Were you only interested in your little, your little church and, 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 uh, or big church, whatever it would be, and the rest of the city you know, can do its own thing? When Jesus stood in the midst of the candlesticks, he said to the church of Philadelphia, to the church of... And now they were probably meeting all over that city in different places, but he considered it one church. We must begin to see ourselves as one church meeting in various different places. Amen? And let the walls down. Aggressively go after the brothers and the sisters uh, in your community that pastor churches. Try and engage them in prayer meetings. God looks favorably upon that. He looks very favorably upon us, what I call cross-pollinating. Amen? We need each other in the body of Christ. So I, I said that to say the three things that will destroy it. They still have their pencils out. The first one is what I call spiritual gossip. And how, what do you mean by that? All right, the Lord has given you something. Maybe the Lord has shown you something about an attack that's going to be on your pastor or an attack that's going to be on the church. And um, you just can't wait to tell it to your prayer group. Now, you've got people there on all different levels. You have more seasoned intercessors that have love to cover any situation or any possible, any possible flaw in someone because uh, Peter said, you know, love covers a multitude of sins. And so if you don't, people on different levels are not going to have the same grace. And if it's a flaw in the leadership or if it's a problem along that line, you never ever share these kind of things in a corporate setting. Spiritual, it will denigrate into gossip. Did you know what the Lord said? So-and-so pastor's going to be getting a, you know, there's going to be this and that and this and that. And the next thing you know, it isn't even remotely uh, close to what what the, the vision was or what God had shown. And the only reason the Lord gave you a warning dream or vision was so you would pray so that it wouldn't happen, for crying out loud. You know, not begin to speak it into existence. And so when we begin to share things outside of, uh, uh, of, of, of what God has shown us, now, if you have a prayer partner, my prayer partner is my husband. 
And I know that any time I, I share something with him, it will never be shared. There's so many things that God gives me that I, I do not share with my intercessory prayer group. And it's not that I don't trust them. It's just that I feel like I need to live by the rules that we, that, you know, I have to live by the same standard that everybody else does. Now, uh, if our intercessors have something that they, they have the freedom to, to call me and to talk to me, but we ask them not to discuss or, or share with other people. And so the intercessors often will call me and give me uh, things that, that God has given them. We pray about them discreetly together because I believe that we need to, to cover our leadership. Well, everybody's got flaws. Everybody's got flaws for crying out loud. We need to cover them in prayer with love. We don't need to expose, you know, what we think is going to happen or what their vulnerability is. A lot of times we don't even have to have discernment. You know, the man or woman of God stands up there and you can see right immediately, uh, you know, the flaws. And I mean, we're great. We have 20-20 vision on everybody else. And we have tunnel vision on us, you know. We don't see, <laughs> we don't see anything wrong with us. But God has called us to cover. Now, I want to, I want to, um, just go down that track a little bit more with the I remember praying for a worship uh, leader one time and uh, the Holy Spirit had so burdened me for this young man that he needed to be covered in prayer now he wasn't a part of our church he wasn't anywhere close or anything like that but as I was as I was uh, w was worshiping the Lord and, and praying the Holy Spirit put such a burden for me and I saw myself being lifted up and it was like as I was lifted, I was in a place where I could look down and I saw this particular, this particular artist, musician, with a guitar. And um, as I looked at him and I was praying for him, the Lord gave me something like, I guess you'd say like, like cheesecloth or netting or something very loose and very, and very fine and, and thin. And I knew that I was to drop that over him. And so when I did, he still had full mobility. He could still move around. It wasn't hindering him at all. And the Lord gave me an understanding in that. Our intercession for our leadership is to, be cover, is to cover them, but to not restrict them. And don't let your prayer cover be something that's going to cause them to be bound. Just let them have the freedom to be who they are. We're called to protect them in prayer, not to restrict them or to, or, to, uh, or to make them do what we think they ought to do. That's witchcraft, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we are praying and imposing our will. You say, well, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. We can hold people. Jesus talks about it. If, if someone has something against you, go and make that right. Your prayers will be hindered. Uh, we, I believe that there's so much control in unforgiveness unforgiveness we when we hold people in unforgiveness we hold them so that they're not able to 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 oft times uh, enter into the things that God has for them we need to begin to release people and speak blessings on them so spiritual gossip will not only cause a confusion and cause problems in your intercessory prayer group and it'll get you know rumors going and all kinds of stuff it will also bring a reproach on you hello when we begin to share things I spoke of it briefly earlier. When we begin to share things with people who are not walking where you're walking, not that you're more superior or anything like that, but perhaps because God has called you to a, to a certain thing, and he, he shows you things. Uh, so often in intercession, we th see things symbolically. Makes total sense to us. Doesn't mean anything to anybody else. So what happens? You, you rush up to this person. You say, oh, you know what? The Lord said I was supposed to wear red shoes today because it's, a, it's symbolic of this or that or the other. The person's going, woo flaky weirdo whoa and so they begin to distance themselves from you now what you saw was true and what and what and what happened to you you know it was very powerful to you but that other person's not on the same page and so what happens they reject you and then I see I see intercessors all over the all over the world that are carrying spirits of rejection I got the spirit of rejection. Everybody rejects me. Well, don't be so flaky and you won't get rejected, you know. And so then they carry their heart on their sleeve. And every time somebody brushes up, again, oh, they've rejected me. And so what they do is they flitter from church to church to church. They may have a powerful prophetic word. They may have tremendous knowledge over their city. They may be extremely, extremely gifted in that. But they have negated their own worth because they've opened their mouth and shared things when they should have kept their mouth shut. Amen. And appeared normal anyway. 
Oh, yes. Another, another danger for intercessors is lack of submission. Here we have applications you have to fill out in order to, to join the intercession. And, and when you're handed an application, it'll be uh, your, your obligation, if you, and, and what is going to be required of you is printed out ahead of time. Hello? Some of you are nodding your head thinking that's a good idea. And so when they come in, when they come into intercession, they know what is going to be required. We know what is going to be required of us. We're not coming in under some other guy. If you can't live up to what's going to be required of you, then don't bother filling out the application. If the application is filled out, and uh, then it goes to our cell pastors or, or to our senior pastors. If you're from another church, your pastor has to, to write a letter of recommendation and saying that you are in good standing with your church. We want uh, that you're a tither, that you're a person of integrity in your church, that you're faithful to your church. In Brownsville, you will not work in any department doing anything unless you are a person under, uh, under a pastor unless you belong to a church, unless you're a tithing person, unless you're a person of integrity. You say that's too hard? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Because, uh, and, and why the tithing? Because if God's got your pocketbook, he's usually got your heart, you know? <laughs> so these are some of the requirements. Now, on intercession, we have an addenda uh, application and, uh, that has to do with intercession um, issues. Okay, if you have cleared through that and through the pastors and so on, then the application will be turned over to, um, to the team that, that actually takes care of the applications, and then you will have a personal interview. People can look great on paper, but somehow when you get face-to-face, -face, things are a little bit different. So there are two that do the interview and one that sits and listens. And so they have a list of questions and so on, and uh, and and let the people the let the people talk. And usually, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And they and the intercessors know what we're looking for to be team players. Many intercessors are not team players; they fly solo. They are so prophetic and they are so powerful that they cannot fit into uh, into a team teamwork. Anybody know what I'm? They ha have it, they have developed a spirit of independence. And so when they're rejected at one church, they will, you know, land in another church. And then they will land in another. Being a free-flying intercessor, a butterfly intercessor, is going to get you into some big trouble facing what we're going to be up against in the future. We're going, I believe that the warfare and the style of warfare that God's going to call us into, uh, you know, with all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of, and uh, and many, many, more, tens of thousands of people that are being saved. You think the enemy is just going to sit back and do nothing? If, if we haven't really gotten out of his bag of tricks that's worked for all these centuries yet, he's got some things deep in the bag that he's going to begin to bring up, and we had better be in tune, and we had better be under some, uh, uh, some covering and authority. I'm a full believer in having, in having submission to a, a pastor, pa the pastoral leadership. All intercessors need to belong to a church, and they need to be functional and intercession in that church that's why God has placed you there amen so when we have lack of submission what we're looking for when we do our interviews at night and our and our people know what we're looking we're not looking for the the you know the, these great prophetic giftings and and, uh, and visions and all that stuff we're looking for the intent of the heart what is the intent of the heart we're looking for a submissive and and a contrite and broken spirit that God will not despise and we know then you'll be teamwork team workers because all of the prophetic can be developed in anybody yeah prophet uh, we are spirit people first of all you know and so the prophetic can be developed in anybody it just needs to be encouraged because if you have the Holy Ghost in you you have the cap capability of all nine gifts of the Spirit and and then some you know so it's not a matter of that we even have a class on how to develop the intercession in you which is in our in our intercessory prayer it's another meeting that we have during the week uh, another course you say oh you guys are in training all the time that's right because we always need to be learning amen Anyway, when we, if, if we are free flyers and unsubmitted, you're going to be trouble. And I can spot them, usually, you know, the ones, I, oh, I'm, a, I'm an intercessor and this and that. Ooh, yeah. And I'm sure you are. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But I know you're not going to flow. I know that you're not going to be a team player. And we have to have team players. And the last thing is spiritual pride. Because of the abundance of revelation, there will come pride. Thinking, do you have all three of those? <laughs> She's smiling down her. She has somebody in mind over this. 
<laughs> oh, you. <laughs> I'm playing with you. But it's all of a sudden, but I've got an edge on God. My goodness, I know more than the pastor does. God has let me in on this, and the pastor hasn't even arrived there yet. Oh, and I've got the... The pastor is the one with the vision. We come underneath his vision. Yeah, so you maybe, maybe see some things farther down the road. So what? That is only so you can pray to that end. It's not because you've got some edge on God. He has a great big pin. He will be glad to stick into you. And I mean to tell you, and it will come at a most humiliating time. If you've got a heart really right for him and you're, and you're getting into pride, he just has ways of, of bringing us down. Okay, now tomorrow we're going to open up a session in the other room where we're going to have some questions and answers. If we haven't been able to answer your questions here today, then, um, then uh, maybe there will be an opportunity then instead of opening up because we're, our time's getting away from our, our youth intercessors, our children intercessors are here with us. And we're going to be asking for some cross-pollination later on. And we're going to give the children an opportunity to pray for us. Amen. Ha, oh, you haven't experienced anything till these these kids have prayed for you. Praise the Lord. Well, did we all get our pieces of paper? Did they hand them out? And so I don't have one here. <laughs> Do we have any next one? Are we all prepared to minister to the Lord? Are we all prepared to see what God's, what's on God's heart. Amen. Are we all prepared to be in unity? And to be open to the Holy Spirit? Well, we got to shed these chairs. Yeah. You know, there were no chairs in the temple or the tabernacle, I might add. Nobody got to sit down. Now, if you have a physical problem, that's one thing. But that's why this area is all cleared out. Because we're going to start some worship music. And what we're going to do is we're just going to let the Lord draw us into his presence. We don't have live worship, so we'll have to rely on CDs. I carry my band with me. They're always in perfect tune and in total unity with each other. I never have to mess with them, and they're always on time. <laughs> yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to worship the Lord, and, what, and, and all you're expected to do is open, open yourself up and say, God, I'm ministering to you. What's on your heart today? It's real simple. Now we're going to have a couple of uh, a couple of what we call filters, not because we don't trust uh, your word, but because of exactly the description that we gave earlier, and that is so that we can get make sure we fully have the mind of the Lord. A lot of times people come in, they've never really, you know. No, heard the voice of the Lord. They've never, because we, we have a lot of visions and things like that that happen in the intercession, and so uh, maybe that'll be the first time, and maybe it'll just be for you. It isn't something that needs to be uh, to be uh, shared corporately. So uh, let's see. How about um, how about um, Ruth and um, Mary and and um, Teresa? Okay, uh, stand up, you guys. Yeah, there'll be the filters. The others, the, some of the other intercessors will be helping us here. And uh, in fact, you know what? We have so many people. Maybe we better have more than that. Okay. How about? Um, Let's see. How about all you guys? Lorraine, all you guys in there. Okay. Rita, stick with me because we might need something. And, um, okay, you guys come on up here so they'll see who you are. If God gives you something, go to one of these intercessors. Our men aren't here because they're working. <laughs> Somebody's got to feed the family, you know. <laughs> And so the, if, if God gives you something, then, then uh, bring, it, bring it to uh, one of the intercessors here. And, uh, and we'll just see where God takes us. Then we'll begin to pray declaration out of revelation. Amen. We trust the Lord's going to move. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get this stuff out of here. Let's get on our feet, you guys. Let's kind of move up in this area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have something... Well, I don't have any paper here. This is our, do we have any paper in here? Do we have paper? Okay. This is our little, we call it the black box, only it's gray. And before, we also have the black box, okay. And how we, uh, this is a visual for us, how uh, we help to train and, and get the focus on not bringing anything into the room that shouldn't be here.
We're going we're gonna to set this out here. We have pieces of paper and pencils so you can, uh, you know, uh, write, write down whatever Lord shows you that shouldn't be in this room and, and tear it up and put it in the little slot as soon as we get some paper. And you say, oh, well, I'm in here and I'm fine. But sometimes when we begin to enter into the presence of God, he'll begin to nail some stuff in us. And that way we can make sure it's, <laughs> has he already started to work? Yeah, that way we can, uh, that way we can write it out, tear it up and uh, know that, uh, that that's just symbolic of it being gone and you'll be ready and uh, prepared to worship the Lord. Okay, let me start out here with, um, we'll do a little bit, ah, give me the, give me this. I can go all over the world with this too. I've got African music, I've got, I've got uh, Native American music, I've got all kinds of stuff. This one is from Belfast, Ireland. Whoa. 